Hi guys, Audrey here. So today we are going to look at some sequences and determine whether or not they converge or diverge by using the squeeze theorem for sequences. So the squeeze theorem for sequences, remember, works almost exactly the same way as the squeeze theorem for functions. Um, it's mostly useful when there is a part of your sequence whose limit as n approaches infinity doesn't exist, but the thing can be bound. So most of the time, we're going to see that with trig functions. So sine in, for example, if we look at what's happening to sine in, so sine looks like this, and it just keeps doing that forever. So the limit as n goes to infinity of sine in won't exist because it's just bouncing back and forth forever and ever and ever. So this is sine x, sine in would be like only the values that are defined at like one and then two and then three. So it'd be like little dots on this thing. But again, it would just be bouncing back and forth between numbers that are between negative one and one. So what that means is that limit won't exist, but we can bound it. So we're gonna start off by looking at the limit as n approaches infinity of this thing. 3n squared plus sine n over 5n squared plus n. And we have that part that doesn't exist, so we're going to have to get rid of it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is bound it. I know that sine n is somewhere between negative 1 and 1. Then, after I've bound it, I'm going to slowly add things back and multiply by things to get from that bounding of sine in to the original sequence that I had. So in the original sequence, my sine in was being added to 3 in squared. So now I'm going to add 3 in squared to each of these things. Adding 3 in squared is not going to change my inequality. So I'll have 3 in squared minus 1 is less than 3n squared plus sine n is less than 3n squared plus 1. Now the next thing I want to do is divide by 5n squared plus n. 5n squared plus n, 5n squared plus n. So division by a negative number would cause my inequalities to change. But I have n approaching infinity. We're looking at the rank of the sequence. The rank of the sequence starts at 1, and then we're saying let it get bigger and bigger and bigger. So my n value is definitely always positive. So that's not going to change the sign of my inequalities either. So in other words, what that means is I have 3n squared minus 1 over 5n squared plus n is less than 3n squared plus sine n over 5n squared plus n is less than 3n squared plus 1 over 5n squared plus n. So now, in other words, I have squunched this sequence in between two other sequences, which means that we need to see what's going on with those two sequences. So we'll call this one A. Well, actually, let's call it smiley face. We're going to call this one smiley face. And we'll call this one over here star. So for smiley face, we have the limit as n approaches infinity of 3n squared minus 1 over 5n squared plus n. This is just rational. I can just take the dominant terms, take the big stuff. Those n squareds will cancel out, and I can see just by looking that that gives me a 3 over 5. So this right here is going to 3 over 5. Now let's look at star. The limit as n goes to infinity of 3n squared plus 1 over 5n squared plus n. I wrote that wrong up here. Plus n, sorry guys, not 1. So again, I can take my dominant terms. 3n squared, 5n squared. The n squareds cancel out, and we can see again just by looking that this also equals to 3 over 5. So that's giving me a 3 over 5. So in other words, we've now squunched this sequence between two things, both, both of which are approaching 3 over 5. What that means is this limit also has to be approaching 3 over 5. And my final answer here, therefore, is that by the squeeze theorem, a n converges to 3 fifths.
And we are done with this problem. We're just gonna look at one more where when we're applying the squeeze theorem, when we're bounding our thing to try to find the things that we wanna squinch in, in between, where we do have to change our inequalities. All right, so now we have a sub n is equal to six n plus seven over n squared cosine n plus two. So, oops. So we're gonna look at the limit of this thing. The limit as n approaches infinity of six n plus seven over n squared cosine n plus two. And we have the same problem that we had in the last one. This cosine n, we could draw a graph of cosine x and then we could like look at the little dots and see this is also bouncing back and forth between numbers that are always between negative one and one. But it's gonna continue that bouncing, it's gonna continue that oscillation forever. So that means that limit doesn't exist. So in order to evaluate this limit, we're going to need to bound cosine. So negative one is less than cosine n is less than one. Now again, we're gonna multiply by things and add things to slowly build back up to what we started with. So first, cosine is being multiplied by n squared. Well, n squared is always positive, so we can just multiply by it, and that's not going to change our inequalities, it's not gonna change anything. So I'll have negative n squared is less than n squared cosine n is less than n squared. Now I'm adding two. Well, adding also, oops, I'm adding in the wrong place. Adding also does not change those inequalities. So plus two, plus two, plus two. And I end up with two minus n squared is less than two plus n squared cosine n is less than two plus n squared. Now here's where the inequalities are gonna change. That n squared cosine n plus two is actually in my denominator. So I need to put it in the denominator. And to put it in the denominator, that's going to change my inequality signs. So flipping a fraction can change inequality signs. Multiplying or dividing by a negative can also change those inequality signs. So when I do my flipping of the fraction, that's gonna become greater than instead of less than. And I'm gonna flip this around. I don't know why I flipped it around to begin with so that it looks like what we started with this inequality sign will also change. Good. So now I can multiply each of these things by 6n plus 7. And 6n plus 7 will always be a positive value because n starts at 1 and is going to infinity. So I'm also going to flip this around so that we still have less than because a lot of times it's just easier to think about that in that way. The smallest goes on the left. So I'll have 6n plus 7 over n squared plus 2 is less than 6n plus 7 over n squared cosine n plus 2 is less than 6n plus 7 over n squared negative n squared plus 2. So now we have our things that we've bounded in between. We've squunched it in between these two sequences. So we'll call this one smiley face over here and this one's star. So for smiley face, we're just looking at the limit as n approaches infinity of six n plus seven over n squared plus two. We can take the dominant terms, we can just take the big stuff. We'll get that this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity. One of those n's will cancel out, leaving me with six over n, which will be going to zero because we have that infinity on the bottom. All right, let's look at star. And hopefully star is doing the same thing. So we'll have the limit as n goes to infinity of six n plus seven over negative n squared plus two. Again, I'm gonna take my dominant term. So I have six n on top and negative n squared on the bottom. So this gives me the limit as n approaches infinity of six over negative n but that also is going to zero. So now we have squunched it between two sequences, both of which are approaching zero, which means this limit up here must also equal to zero. And my final answer is that by the squeeze theorem, A sub n converges to zero. 
and blah, 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 we're done. That's all for today. Bye guys.